This is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Don Brennan, along with John Scalzi. Thank you for joining us on this Monday morning. And, well, an extra hour sleep over the weekend, and oh, that should help in our making our decisions to vote, because tomorrow, voting How's that? day. Well, you should be more, you know, mentally with it. They say if you don't have enough sleep, you, you lose memory, you lose brain cells, what all kinds say? of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. On this shift, what'd you say? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was nice sleeping in, no doubt about that. And it was a little drier air moved in over the weekend, made it feel a little bit more comfortable, even though temperatures were still pretty warm. I think uh, today we're looking for another fine day. And no weather excuses, it looks like, on Election Day to, uh, to not get out and vote. Everything looks pretty good if you have not already done so. Uh, we're looking at a few scattered showers out in Gulf waters, nothing over land. It will be a rain-free day today. It will be a nice warm afternoon. Temperatures, again, run slightly above the average for this time of year. And uh, as far as the rain-free sky goes, most of the week may be rain-free. Maybe one day might be in question, and we'll talk about that coming up in just a few. Tom. Thank you, John. Let's take a look at Suncoast Roadways, which had some troubles over the weekend, which we will talk about. But right now, everything's moving along nicely on the Suncoast Roadways, both in Manatee County. You see Palmetto, Ellington, downtown Bradenton looking good, as are the out east, and the roads bringing you out there. And then into Sarasota County. That, too, is free and clear of any accidents or impediments to getting where you want to go as you head out the door right now. Now, topping our news this morning, a child is in the hospital after the car in which he was riding hit a pedestrian overnight in Sarasota. It happened when the vehicle was traveling northbound on Nelda Lane around 5 o'clock last night. The driver lost control of the vehicle, drove off the road, and hit a man on the sidewalk. Florida Highway Patrol notes that the pedestrian injuries are minor. However, the six-year-old passenger in the car received serious injuries. The young child was flown to All Children's Hospital. His condition as yet unknown. The Tampa area man and his two children are dead after the car flipped over on I-75 this weekend. Florida Highway Patrol reporting that the car was driving on an overpass and burst into flames after it flipped over. Reports show the two parents weren't wearing seatbelts during the accident and were ejected. The children were still in the car when it caught fire. The mother survived the crash. All the other three perished. Investigators are trying to determine if alcohol was involved. And the Manatee County Sheriff's Office is investigating the death of an 18-year-old woman in Bradenton. Deputies say that they responded to a possible shooting on the 3300 block of 4th Street East on Sunday. A potential witness had driven the victim, Mariah Good, to the Manatee Memorial Hospital, and Good was pronounced dead after her arrival. Anyone with information should contact the Manatee County Sheriff's Office. In developing overnight, an attempted robbery case in Bradenton as two men were walking together through a parking lot when another came out of the bushes, punching one of them in the face, and then tried to steal their wallet. When one of the victims started to yell that they were calling the police, the robber ran away and has yet to be found. K-9 units were used in attempts to find him, but to no, no avail. Anyone with information on the case is asked to call Manatee County Crime Stoppers. Now, also concerned this weekend, multiple people in Manatee County were left confused after a possible voting scam through text messaging. Several voters received a text this weekend with a link to the website IWillVote.com. After entering their address, they were instructed to go to the Supervisor of Elections Office or the Rocky Bluff Library for early voting yesterday. But both buildings were empty since early voting ended in Sarasota and Manatee counties on Saturday. A volunteer with a voting hotline in Tampa tells us that they are aware of this error and are taking steps to correct it. And early voting may be over in Sarasota and Manatee counties and all over, actually, but there's always tomorrow. Local churches are pushing their congregations to head to the polls on Tuesday. ABC7's Kate Flexter has the story. Here at Light of the World Church, the pastor had a really interesting message this morning. It was a call to action. On Sunday, the sermon had a clear message. Get out and vote. For churchgoer Vicki Oldham, it's important. It started out the sermon um, definitely pointing out the importance of uh, voting no matter who wins. Pastor Kelvin Lumpkin delivered the sermon and says it's crucial for churches to be involved in the process. Well, the African American church still holds a special place in the community. Pastors still have a large influence. And um, I don't think I should use my influence to tell people how to vote. But I do think I should use my influence to tell people that you ought to vote. 
Right now, black voters only account for about 15% of early votes, as opposed to 2012 when they made up about 25% of those votes. That's according to a University of Florida political analyst. Pastor Lumpkin says he's seen some of that apathy firsthand. But I'm mostly concerned about those who just feel like their vote doesn't count and just kind of sit on the sidelines and let it play out. And I think that's a dangerous mentality. Sarasota's NAACP President Trevor Harvey says African-American churches across the country have a history of influencing voter turnout. It's churches' ways to be able to be a part of the process, not telling you who to go and vote down the ticket for, but we're going to encourage our parishioners, hey, let's go vote. Harvey says it's particularly important for the African American community to exercise that right. It's really not who you go out and vote for, it's just that you do go out and vote because our forefathers, many died, uh, you know, blood, sweat, and tears for us to have the right um, to vote. For Oldham, that's what drives her to the polls each year. That's what pushes me to not only vote for myself, but get all of my family members to the poll, every last one of them who are of age. Pastor Lumpkin did say, though, that many are waiting until Election Day to cast their vote. In Sarasota, Kate Flexter, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Another church on the Suncoast took some time this weekend to bring awareness to some other tastier causes, such as those involving food trucks. The SRQ Food Truck Alliance hosted a food truck rodeo in Lakewood Ranch, aiming to bring attention to laws involving the trucks and the businesses. Lakewood Ranch Baptist Church held the event, which also had games and music. Event organizers say about 4,500 people came out. This is fun. You don't see these trucks running around Sarasota and they're absolutely gorgeous trucks that serve amazing food. And we're just trying to put it out to the public saying, hey, we're here. Sarasota County Commission is scheduled to meet tomorrow morning to consider a proposal to relax some of its restrictions on those food trucks. More food and fun to speak of as the annual Sarasota Medieval Fair kicked off this weekend. The festival will return with tournament shows, festivities, food, and shopping. The festival is just behind the Sarasota Fairgrounds and has turned into a local tradition since 2005 and brings in new visitors every year. If you get into that time frame, it makes it even more and try to get into the costume that doesn't look like necessarily a Halloween costume, get into the era is what I like to do. There's like a booth and they sell shrunken heads and stuff and like shrunken dragon heads. That one's really cool. <laughs> really cool. Now, no need to worry if you didn't see those shrunken heads this past weekend. The Medieval Fair runs two more weekends. The last day is Sunday, November 20th. And happening today on the Sun Coast, mayors from several counties are urging the public to take a moment and help the hungry. The Mayor's Feed the Hungry program is beginning its food drive this afternoon until the 18th of November at various locations. Those locations include Ed Smith Stadium, Chase Banks, City Halls or police stations in Palmetto, Sarasota, Bradenton, Venice and Northport or any participating school in Manatee or Sarasota County. So bring out your non-perishables to help out. Technology continues to change, and one young innovator on the Sun Coast says more kids her age need to change with it. 12-year-old Isabella Bank is creating an energy app called Earthwise. She says it started out as a small idea that's now becoming a reality. Bank may be young, but her vision for the next 20 years of innovation is very clear. She says the need for programmers and developers will continue to grow with technology, along with different problems that need solving. And there's always going to be problems to be fixed, and so I think programmers will always have a place in our world. Um, and in 20 years, I guess they'll become the people who, who are the underlying base of our community. Technology has changed quite a bit in only Isabella's lifetime alone. The first generation iPhone was announced not even 10 years ago. And one father-son duo are not waiting for the future to fulfill a project together. This weekend, they were out in the community promoting a children's book they made as a team. The book is named Pancakes and Pickles, and they say they came up with the idea while sitting in a diner one night when co-author Cy Schimberg was 13 years old. Now, three years later, they hope that their book can make a difference. The book, I think, is really fun to read. Uh, we highlighted all the letters so it can help kids that are just trying to figure out which letter is which. Uh, we also, obviously because it's alliteration, emphasized uh, sounds and pronunciation. 
All proceeds of the book go to the Miracle League, which is a great, great foundation, nonprofit group that aims to create an opportunity for all children to be able to play baseball, including those with disabilities. So far, the Schimbergs have raised over $2,000. For more information on pancakes and pickles and to learn where you can buy the book, you can go to our website at mysuncoast.com. John, my first thought, pancakes and pickles, was something that, you know, was a craving for a pregnancy. Remember, a pan Mine pic too. pickles and ice creams when we were little. But uh, then the next thought is a 12-year-old doing the technology and a 13-year-old co-writing the book. It's phenomenal. I feel it's useless at my age. I know. <laughs> it's, a, it's just really wonderful to see. It really is. To see our youth, uh, you know, paving the way for the future. Indeed. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a great future. Very Indeed. exciting. Great Indeed. time to live. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, we have uh, some changing weather perhaps coming up a little bit later in the week. But for today, I think the beat of the weekend continues on through the start of this work week. We'll talk about that coming up in a few. And it was a good beat. The mm -hmm. candidate running to be our next vice president spent some time here on the Sun Coast, and not because of the weather. Highlights from Tim Kaine's visit and our exclusive interview with him coming up next. Also, one former presidential candidate speaking out on a controversial issue that does not have to do with either campaign party. We'll tell you what that is coming up soon. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Gold fever has once again swept the nation. And everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. They took that stress and that tension when I was particularly feeling very bad <laughs> after that nasty car accident. And it was such a relief to know that I didn't have to bear that burden alone, that I had help. Our goal is to not just get a, a satisfactory settlement on their case. We want them up on their feet, happy again. They've gotten their life back. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. We promise we're more than a dealership. We're a destination with a movie theater, massage room, aquarium, cafe, and more. We promise to give you top dollar for your trade, even if you don't buy from us. And if you do, we promise you the best deal. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Current air temperature comes in at a cool 69 degrees. You know, our dew point fell over the weekend, and that's what's brought us this, a little bit more of a seasonable feel to the morning air. Coming in a little bit cooler, a little bit crisper because the dew points are lower. Of course, by afternoon, things warm up again, and we're still above average in our daytime high temperatures. 87 degrees yesterday. We'll probably be close to that again today. Mix of fair weather and clouds. We have a, a nice breeze coming out of the northeast again today. 64 degrees. by Chula Arcadia at 65. So is uh, Mayaka City. Looking at uh, Parrish at 65. 64 in Bradenton. 
66 Lakewood Ranch and in Northport. Inglewood and Venice, you're both warmer. You're coming in at 68 degrees, and we have 69 degrees at Longboat Key. So across the region, over the weekend, two days ago, this tan colorization of very dry air was in place after a cold front had moved through and left us with some delightfully crisper, I guess you could say, lower humidity air for Saturday and Sunday. Now, the temperatures were still warm. But the breezes combined with the nice dry air kind of set the stage for a beautiful weekend. Well, since then, that drier air has eroded somewhat, so we're getting a little bit of extra moisture at mid and upper levels back into the forecast picture. What does that mean? A few more clouds around today. That's about it. The air is still so dry that we're not going to get much in the way of any kind of rainfall today or tomorrow. Now, what we will watch is that a area of low pressure, a cold front, will advance in our direction. High pressure will relax a bit and allow for that front to approach. And we'll be watching the Louisiana Delta region to see if an area of low pressure there may eventually form on that cold front and bring us a chance of rain as we head into Wednesday. But currently, it looks like it will be too far to the west, too far to the north and really not impact us with too much in the way of any kind of rainfall. However, the front itself will kind of lower our temperatures a few degrees, bring us back to more seasonable values. It won't be a cold blast, but it will bring us back down into the maybe mid to lower 80s. For today, sun cloud mix, warm afternoon, and some dry skies out there, making it feel very comfortable. It's a nice day to be out and about. East-northeast wind comes in at about 15. Boaters watch the winds may pick up a bit in the afternoon and evening hours. Otherwise, a beautiful day ahead with breezy conditions on Tuesday and Wednesday as the front moves through. And then we look for a lovely rest of the work week. All in all, a great week's forecast, Don. Thank you, John. Taking a look at traffic, and it looks like a great forecast for traffic right now as well. Everything's as clear as the skies, John. Bradenton looking good, and you see uh, State Road 64 and State Road 70 going out to 75 are also without any issues. And as you head down to Sarasota, South Bradenton looking good, and Sarasota too. Sarasota County looking completely clear all the way through into South County and Northport. As you head into Charlotte County, now it's the sprint to election day and presidential candidates are racing to Florida. One candidate in Sarasota yesterday, Hillary Clinton's running mate, Tim Kaine, and he spoke to voters at the Francis in downtown Sarasota. ABC 7's Kate Flexter was there and has the story. The big theme here tonight was to get out the vote. Kane reminding voters of the importance of this battleground state. Raise your hand if you've already early voted. Just days before the election, more than 5 million people have already voted in Florida. Democratic vice presidential nominee Tim Kaine is hoping to see that number grow, urging voters on Saturday to turn in their ballots just hours before early voting ended in both Sarasota and Manatee counties. We love early vote, and you guys are knocking it out of the park. In the crowd waiting to hear Kane speak, many already cast their ballots. So I did early vote. Um, I voted on the 26th. That's Hillary's birthday. A little birthday present to her. Yes, I voted the first day of early voting. And Kane says those early votes provide him important data allowing them to target certain kinds of voters in these final days. The information you get about who is registering, who's asking for absentee ballots and returning them, and who is voting early, now that's real data. That's much more trustworthy and reliable than polls. Rita Ferrandino works on the vote by mail effort across the state and says that data can be crucial. It's really about understanding and targeting your voters and getting them, making sure that they get out to vote. While on stage, Kane challenged Trump's stance on things like climate change and social security, but focused on his character, specifically his claims that the election system is rigged. The more we work and the bigger we win by, he can whine all he wants. But people will know it's just the words of a sore loser. The last note that Kane left the crowd with was don't take anything for granted. He said, quote, you're the underdog until they call you the winner. In Sarasota, Kate Flexter, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Before leaving Sarasota, Kane sat down for an exclusive interview with ABC 7's Alan Cohn to discuss how Team Hillary is handling the latest FBI email leak. Senator, three days ago, uh, how are you feeling? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I love seeing a finish line, and I, I like the energy that I see. So I've been doing basically a state a day for the last nine days of the campaign. 
all states that are battleground states, some that are real checkmate states like Florida. I really like the energy we're seeing. When the Comey yeah. letter came out, it was kind of a punch to the stomach. Yeah. For Republicans, it was sauce for, uh, for the goose. The Comey letter was a, was a distraction, an unfortunate one, because it was a violation of two protocols that Justice Department and FBI have, which is we don't talk about a pending investigation and we won't put out information that could be controversial right on the eve of an election. Those are both really important rules, and Director Comey had followed those rules in other matters, even in the days before that. So when the letter came out, it was very puzzling. Why would they do it? There's a, there's a series of questions about internally dynamics within the FBI that are unfortunate. But the bottom line is, Americans really want to know which you know, president is going to create a better economy for them, which president will has the judgment and the preparation to keep America safe in a challenging world, and especially, and this is the thing that's so energizing to this crowd and others, do you want a president that's going to try to unify people, or do you want a president that's made it cool to insult and demean people? That example set from the Oval Office, we're either going to be stronger together and unify people, or it's okay to name call people, that will pervade the rest of society. That was Alan Cohn with uh, Tim Kaine, and Donald Trump will be in town today. Don't forget he'll be at Roberts Arena this morning. And still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, if mounted, talking fish were not terrifying already, this one surely made the jump. We'll tell you how one man's tech configuration on fish made it extra memorable. And more bodies have been found in South Carolina. What investigators are uncovering about Todd Kohep's past and his involvement with other murders coming up within the hour. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. At Sunset Subaru in Sarasota, you'll always get the most for your money. More years, more miles, more 2016 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus winners than any other brand. And right now, you can lease the most award-winning small SUV on the planet. A new 2017 Subaru Forester for just $209 a month. Or get 0% financing. Complimentary maintenance included at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Batteries Plus bulbs keep stacks of batteries for cars, cell phones, watches, plus light bulbs for lamps, can lights, and appliances right on hand. Did I mention we also repair smartphones? Batteries Plus bulbs. Trust the plus. Visit Batteries Plus bulbs today. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. Welcome back. It's 525 and we can do just about anything online these days, but when will, we, when will we be able to vote for a president from a computer? Well, ABC's Kenneth Gibson and Diane Macedo are going to tell us. In today's Tech Bites, a look at why election technology is still stuck in the Stone Ages. One day, most of us might get to cast our ballots online, but for now, research actually shows voters are satisfied with the status quo. They apparently prefer the security of paper ballots for electric machines that create a paper trail. 
Well, Samsung is going to use artificial intelligence to try to regain the lead in smartphones. The company will include a Siri-like digital assistant in its follow-up to the ill-fated Note 7 phones that caught fire. The Galaxy S8 goes on sale early next year, and Samsung says its digital assistant will also be available in its home appliances. So what do you get when you combine Amazon's voice assistant with a fish? Currently, in Cambridge, it's 45 degrees with showers. <laughs> Tonight, so someone posted a video to Facebook showing 90s novelty Big Mouth Billy Bass speaking with Amazon's Alexa. He called it the future. Those are your Tech Bites. Tech Bites, brought to you by Avis. Grab your coat and get your hat. Leave your worries on the doorstep. Introducing the brilliant new Avis app. Book, choose, upgrade, or add a car seat with the tap of a finger. On the sunny side Avis, this street. way forward. One, or two, or both. Because at VisionWorks, when you buy a pair of glasses, you get a second pair at no additional cost. Go to visionworks.com slash BOGO50 for your coupon to get an additional $50 off our BOGO offer. VisionWorks. Feel a cold sore coming on? Only Abriva can heal it in as few as two and a half days when used at the first sign. It penetrates deep and starts to work immediately to block the virus and protect healthy cells. Don't tough it out. Knock it out fast. Abriva. ABC7 is the most watched, most trusted news source on the Sun Coast, and we owe it all to you, our loyal viewers. Thank you for making us number one. The kitchen is where life happens. Minnesota Flooring now offers a wide variety of beautiful quality craft-made cabinetry to make sure the heart of your home reflects your style. Visit us today. Enjoy fine wine, craft beer, and delicious foods, all while supporting a great cause at the 15th Annual Suncoast Food and Wine Festival, Saturday, November 12th, from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Sarasota Polo Club. Taste hundreds of wines from around the world and sample cuisine from the area's finest restaurants. Watch live cooking demonstrations from local chefs and take part in a silent auction to bid on creative prize packages that will delight any foodie or wine connoisseur. The event will feature live music by Kettle of Fish. There's free parking and all proceeds benefit a variety of local charities and Rotary Club projects. Don't miss this year's Suncoast Food and Wine Festival. Saturday, November 12th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Sarasota Polo Club. For tickets and information, visit suncoastfoodandwinefest.com. Come experience the precision, performance, and power of the Ram 1500 during Ram Power Days at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Built tough enough to help you conquer whatever the day may throw your way with all the comfort gizmos and gadgets you'd find in a luxury vehicle and right now get over 20 percent off that's up to fifteen thousand dollars off a new ram 1500 better prices bigger selection go to sunset dodge chrysler jeep ram in sarasota you only have one life are you gambling with it one in three adults have high blood pressure not knowing your numbers could cause you to lose big time Luckily, you can turn the odds in your favor by getting your blood pressure checked today. Don't leave your health to chance. Learn more at heart.org slash HPB. Selling your home? Insist on a 3D showcase tour from Gulf Shores Realty. Virtual tours are flat and boring and look more like a slideshow than a tour. A 3D tour from Gulf Shores Realty is like actually walking through the home without the drive. Get instant access to your next home from any device. Multiple views give home buyers a perspective like no other. For a limited time, mention ABC7 and Gulf Shores Realty will provide a complimentary 3D tour with your new listing. 
Coming up on Good Morning Suncoast, Donald Trump is in Sarasota just a day before the election where you can hear him making his final point. And does South Carolina have a serial killer on their hands? Well, investigators are trying to find that out about Todd Colehead. And a fatal Tesla accident leaves two dead. What company officials are saying could have caused the autopilot error? Live from the ABC7 studios, this is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Don Brennan, along with John Scalzi. It's 5.30, John, and the countdown continues to Election Day. Although a lot of people, a lot of people got out and voted early. I did. It really relieves the stress. I know you did as well. Yeah, what do they say, 70 percent? For the people, something like it that? It makes it much easier to have a continuous vote, right? Because then wow. you don't stand in line all on the same day and have the stress of getting to work, getting the kids to school, getting to vote. You know? Well, I think it's become so easy to vote now yeah. that, uh, you know, there's no excuses. There is no excuses. No excuses. Get everybody out and vote. That's, That's your right. right. Absolutely. It's your duty. Uh, we have across our region no weather impediments whatsoever over the next two days to getting out the vote. We're looking at a uh, little scattered shower activity out in Gulf waters, but that's no big deal. It stays out there. Morning commute, dry, rain-free, so is the rain-free drive home. We'll look for um, daytime highs to top out again a little bit above the average for this time of year. We'll top it out probably in the mid to upper 80s, and we'll have a mix of sun and clouds with very little in the way of any kind of rain chance. Donnie Boy, take it away. Thank you, John. The roads are no longer as clear as the skies right now. We got an accident both in Manatee County, one in Upper on Upper Manatee Road. Well, the first one, 38th Avenue, the accident at State Road 70 and 15th Street. It's 38th Avenue and 15th Street, but the other one is Upper Manatee River Road. It's at 3rd Avenue. And with not a lot of volume on the roadways right now, not causing any backup, but do be aware of them because it might get worse as traffic gets more. In Sarasota County, everything's looking pretty good all the way through South County, so no accidents or delays to speak of. The presidential candidate is making his way to Sarasota today. Donald Trump scheduled to make one more stop here on the Florida Gulf Coast before tomorrow, the election day, and this one right on the Sun Coast. Republican nominee scheduled to hold a rally at Roberts Arena this morning. Doors open at 8. The rally is scheduled to begin at 11. You must apply online to register for tickets. You can find the link on our website, mysuncoast. Com. Early voting numbers are in for Sarasota and Manatee counties. 51% of all registered voters in Sarasota County have cast their ballots. That's 79,816 votes to be precise. In Manatee County, 48.5% of the registered voters have already come out to the polls. 112,000 votes in total. A reminder, you can vote in person on Tuesday or drop off your absentee ballot by 7 o'clock tomorrow night. And both our presidential candidates are feeling the heat as the last day before the election taking place. Here's a live look at Washington, D.C. this morning. ABC's Elizabeth Herr is there with the latest on the election, concluding an FBI director saying the investigation into Hillary Clinton's newly discovered emails is once again over. This morning, the final fight for the battleground states with Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton making a last push in a campaign full of surprises. The latest from the FBI, clearing Clinton again. FBI Director James Comey now telling congressional leaders, based on our review, we have not changed our conclusions that we expressed in July. Sources telling ABC News that the new batch of emails contained duplicates that the FBI had already reviewed. Trump, who first criticized the FBI when there were no charges, then commended the agency when the new emails were discovered, is now outraged again. Right now, she's being protected by a rigged system. Clinton's campaign saying they are glad the matter is resolved, but no public comment from the candidate, who is wrapping up a weekend of star-studded campaigning and declaring what's at stake. It is a choice between division or unity, between strong, steady leadership or a loose cannon. Clinton is leading in the latest ABC News tracking poll, but with the race still close, both campaigns are fighting to the finish. I want to be the president for all Americans, those who vote for me and those who do not vote for me. On November 8th, we are going to do something so special. And part of Clinton's advantage in our poll numbers comes from record numbers of Americans who voted early. We're talking more than 40 million and counting. 
Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Washington. Now on social media, some playful trick trickery in the final hours leading up to Election Day tomorrow. The National Rifle Association thinks gun supporters and gun control advocates should vote on different days. The NRA posting a photo on Instagram showing two election dates. The picture shows the side of a building reading, Remember your assigned voting days, Second Amendment supporters. November 8th, gun control activists. November 9th, Election Day for all registered voters, of course, is tomorrow, November 8th. Former presidential candidate Bernie Sanders campaigned for his former rival Hillary Clinton in Nebraska this weekend, taking time to passionately speak out about the North Dakota Access Pipeline controversy. The nearly 1,200-mile planned pipeline would be a link between North Dakota and Illinois. The project was okayed by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in July, but it is being protested by the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe in North Dakota. They say the Pipeline's construction would ruin sacred land and possibly contaminate drinking water. Sanders weighed in on the issue, saying he has learned a lot from Native American leaders. And they have taught us so much, but perhaps the most important lesson that they have taught us, and one that we cannot fail to heed, is that as human beings, we are part of nature. And if we destroy nature, we are destroying ourselves. President Obama says his administration is looking into possible alternate routes for this pipeline. Propon proponents of the pipeline say it would bring in economic boom and reduce U.S. reliance on foreign oil. And in one 24-hour period, 4,000 people fleeing ISIS and the battle for Mosul arrived at the Akazer camp, filling it to capacity. An estimated 1.2 million civilians inside Mosul, aid workers are worried that this is just a trickle before the flood of more people. As Iraqi forces continue their offensive against ISIS inside Mosul, families are fleeing in the highest numbers since the military campaign began last month. A new camp was opened at Hassan Sham in northern Iraq Friday to accommodate the growing number of people fleeing Mosul. And that other camp will ultimately have a capacity for 11,000 people. Still registering people, about uh, 200 tents, uh, 200 families have been uh, allocated a tent so far. Uh, what we notice, there is a serious uh, um, uh, increase in terms of influx for the past two days, and that probably will be the same in the next uh, few days or so. Aid organizations expected these people to come and have prepared, be prepared as much as possible. The problem is not knowing what's yet to come. And there is, let's see. Something else is happening in Hassan Sham, but uh, we'll get to that story in just a second here. Eight organizations. Now, we're, there's a, more on the woman who was held captive in South Carolina for two months. Now, on her killer, the serial killer is, uh, well, more is happening with Mr. Colstep. Bizarre new twist in the investigation of accused killer Todd Colehab, the South Carolina realtor facing a judge Sunday wearing an orange jailhouse jumpsuit. You understand? Yes, sir. It's the same outfit he wore Saturday as he guided authorities back to his 100-acre property, where they say he showed them two shallow graves. Colehep is in the spotlight after investigators found Kayla Brown alive but chained up in a storage container on his land. Brown and her boyfriend Charlie Carver had been missing for two months. Carver's body found Friday, shot multiple times. Didn't even think for a minute that this had anything to do with that. But the biggest bombshell so far, Cole Hepp allegedly confessing to a cold case mass murder. Four people gunned down in a motorsports shop back in 2003. Sunday marks the 13th anniversary of that terrible day. The victim's family sitting in the courtroom as Cole Hepp officially faced murder charges. I, I believe that, that there's evil in the world, and I, and I hope to God that, that he does get what's coming to him. So far, officials say Cole Hepp is cooperating with authorities, even as bulldozers, men on horseback, and police with dogs search his property for even more evidence, possibly even more victims. We're still working this crime scene. Uh, we're not done yet. The 45-year-old realtor has not entered a plea on any of the charges so far, but for some of the victims' families, just knowing the truth helps. It's going to be the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, but if at some point I could actually pray with a gentleman, look him in his eye, and tell him I forgive him. And that 
he did not win. Mark Remillard, ABC News, New York. And this is in Colehut's first run-in with the law. He was convicted in 1987 as a teenager of kidnapping and raping a woman in Arizona. Court documents from that case file say Colehut was obsessed with weapons and hurting others. And a Georgia police officer died, another injured in a shooting last night. Officials say Sergeant Patrick Sondran and Deputy Darrell Smallworld were responding to a call of a domestic dispute at a house in Byron, Georgia. Authorities say the suspect opened fire at both deputies when they arrived at the scene. They get out, they walk maybe 10, 15 yards or so, and they came under fire. They were both struck, they both went down right there. Police say Sondran died from his injuries and Smallwood is in critical condition. Officials identified the suspect as Ralph Stanley Elrod and they say he was shot, but his condition is unknown. He is in police custody. Meanwhile, in Florida, a mother is sticking with an 18 year old son after he's charged with beating his grandmother to death during an argument over beer. Police reports reveal Tracy Broman was Similar, has similar issues with his mom. And earlier this year, she was arrested and charged with battery following a fight with 69-year-old Joyce Corson, grandmother. Tracy battered Corson, leaving red bruising on both forearms. But the charges were dropped for her son Dylan, however, faces charges for this current incident. And details emerging after a fatal Tesla crash last week as officials say the car was traveling too fast to be on autopilot and due to the crash, the car was physically incapable of sending any transmission data from its system back to the company. Witnesses on site say the accident was terrifying as an explosion happened, leaving debris flying into the distance. Firefighters also report that they had problems trying to pull the car out as they had to use a combination of dry powder and water to get the fire completely out. And an earthquake next to one of the world's key oil hubs triggered concern over the weekend. With people in Oklahoma saying now it seems like this is just daily activity. The magnitude 5.0 Tembler might have caused damage to the key infrastructure in addition to damaging buildings in an Oklahoma prairie town. The Oklahoma Corporation Commission said it and the Oklahoma Geological Survey were investigating after the quake, which struck about 745 last night. Effects from the disaster were felt as far away as Iowa, Illinois, and Texas. I came flying up off the couch because I just felt it all shaking. My aunt went and grabbed my cousin off our bunk bed and we ran outside and it was just all shh. And then after the after shakes are just crazy because they were just like. I just heard the whole house shaking and I went outside. I heard the rumbling in the ground and just what was going on. Nothing in our house uh, broke or fell off the walls or anything. The Cushing Police Department reported quite a bit of damage from the earthquake, but details were not immediately available. And Denver Broncos linebacker Brandon Marshall has officially ended his protest of the national anthem. The linebacker is standing during the anthem before yesterday's game against the Raiders for the first time this season. On Instagram before the game, he explained that he's ending the protest after discussions with Denver police about the use of force policies. He added he still believes there is more work to be done despite his personal decision. And good news for the future of the Tampa Bay Rays is Brent Honeywell, the organization's number two prospect, was light out in Sarasota, I mean Saturday's Arizona Fall League All-Star Game. He started the game, struck out five of the six batters he faced. He's looking pretty good. He pitched for the Stone Crabs most recently. And well, he's no squirrel, John. Once again, a squirrel making headlines. On Sunday, during the third quarter of the Colts Packer game, the furry little guy decided he wanted to Maybe take the ball and run with it. Squirrels scurry through the end zone, stopping the game momentarily and stealing much, as much attention as he could, but probably not as much as the squirrel that the Yankee did many years ago, going up and down the wires, the guy wires in the stadium and having everybody transfixed. Transfixed for sure. Squirrel. Squirrel. <laughs> Squirrely behavior. Yes. <laughs> Changing weather coming up midweek. We'll talk about that after the break. Oh, some squirrely weather. That's that is right. Yes. And driving at night, is it affecting your vision? The latest research is coming up. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. 
G. Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Are you considering joint replacement or revision surgery? Consider this. Dr. Edward Stolarski has performed thousands of successful joint replacement procedures and trained surgeons from all over the world. Using advanced technologies, Dr. Stolarski is able to perform some of the most complex surgeries. I wish I knew about Dr. Stolarski much sooner. After the surgery, I don't have any pain. It's like I've got a 16-year-old hip. My name's Ed Stolarski. What I really do is I give people back their life. Schedule a consultation today. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. Hello. Hello, I'm Jamie D. Domenico with Cool Today, Plumbing Today, and Energy Today. Here in the Sun Coast, taking care of people is more than a slogan. It's a way of life. On Tuesday, November 15th, do your part and show that the Sun Coast cares. Come by the Sun Coast Blood Bank from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. and donate one or more of these important items needed by local organizations, including a life-saving blood donation. For more details, visit suncoastcares.org. That's Tuesday, November 15th from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Sun Coast Blood Bank. See you there. Uh, they, they care. They, they take the time to understand you, take the time to understand your case. There's no better satisfaction to me than to see a client who is happy because of the job we've done for them. It's really actually very comforting to know that there's someone that you've heard of and you're getting recommendations about that you can turn to when you have a problem. I felt like I had a partner in this and uh, he was going to be by my side. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Now, the official Sun Coast weather with ABC7 meteorologist John Scalzi. Current air temperature comes in at a, a comfortable 69 degrees. We're watching a little mix of sun and clouds out there, or at least darkness and clouds right now, sun coming up, and a, a dew point at uh, 60 degrees. That 60 degree dew point, very comfortable. And as we head into probably about Thursday, we may see that dew point fall into the 50s, making it feel even more delightful as another front of boundary moves through the area. Um, northeast wind coming in at about 7 right now across the region, 64. Wachula, Arcadia at 65, 64. Mayaka, Parrish, Bradenton, 65s at Lakewood Ranch and Northport. Punta Gorda temperature missing at this hour, 68 degrees, both at uh, Venice and Inglewood and 69 Longboat Key. And as I mentioned, Sarasota coming in 69 as well. High pressure. The dominant weather feature over the eastern seaboard, bringing some very tranquil, tame conditions from New England all the way down through the mid-Atlantic into the deep south. As you head back to the west, eh, you got some problems. You got a low pressure area and a frontal boundary that sinks south across the top part of Texas today. Uh, we're going to see some thunderstorm activity in Texas. If you are traveling to Texas today, Houston Airport, Dallas Airport, there may be some airport delays because of inclement weather. Now, severe weather not anticipated, but certainly some good thunderstorm activity, good solid thunderstorm activity, a probability here. Now, the fly in the ointment for our forecast on Wednesday comes with whether or not a frontal boundary sinking southward will eventually develop a low pressure area that will move into our area, bringing us a chance at some rainfall as we head into probably Wednesday night. Currently, I think that all of this is going to remain well to the north, and we're not going to have too much in the way of those issues 
as we head into Wednesday. The front will come through Wednesday night into Thursday morning, but I think it'll come through relatively dry. Now, nah, we might have to adjust that forecast over the next day or so. But the one thing we do know is that once that front is through, then we get some nicer weather, I think, even nicer than we had over the weekend, which was pretty nice, but it was still above average warm temperatures. I think as we head into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we'll probably see temperatures more in line with our average, which will be around 81, 82 degrees. Sun cloud makes another warm afternoon, but still low relative humidity. And dry skies, I think, will be the name of the game for today. A few scattered showers try to make it across, but they just kind of fall apart. You can see that on our Titan radar. As they try to cross the entire peninsula, they just run out of rain. Now, our future rainfall forecast does show some developing showers around the Louisiana Delta region. But for us, we stay high and dry until that cold front moves on through. Now, we may see some activity along the other coast in terms of some rain showers, but I don't think we're going to see a whole lot around here. If you look at the uh, thunderstorm forecast, it's all centered around Texas, and we remain absolutely dry. So, taking a look at uh, what to expect today, not a bad day for boating. Just watch that afternoon surge of winds coming in at 15 to 20 knots during the late afternoon and into the evening. And then that 20% chance of a shower, we'll call it on Wednesday, breezy as well with daytime highs falling about four or five degrees. Back to you, Don. Thank you, John. Taking a look at Suncoast Roadways. Uh, two accidents to speak of in Manatee County. One is on uh, 38th Avenue at State Road 70, so be aware that doesn't seem to be causing a backup. The other is on Upper Manatee River Road at 3rd Avenue. You see that, neither one causing a backup at this point, so, uh, but do be aware of them. It may as traffic picks up at this time in the morning. And then as you head down, the rest of Manatee County looking good. Sarasota County, too, is free and clear of any impediments this morning. Everything is normal for 552. As the days get shorter, many of us are spending more time commuting in the dark. And for some, the combination of the darkness and the glare of the oncoming headlights can cause some visibility issues. For many folks, some of the newer ultra-bright headlights are the most bothersome. Ultra-bright lights do not pose any danger to our eyes because we're typically only exposed to them for a short period of time. But if they blind you while you're driving, they could be a problem. Doctors say eye problems from light exposure are typically the result of prolonged exposure. While it's normal to notice some changes in night vision as we age, there are some warning signs that should not be ignored. It's okay to have it occasionally at nighttime or more constantly at nighttime when you have a real uh, issue or a known issue going on. It's when it happens during the day and especially with a decrease in vision or a decrease in your visual field, really, really want to get an evaluation by an optometrist or an ophthalmologist for that condition. Doctors say that anytime you notice a significant change in your vision, either during the night or during the day, it's a good idea to have an evaluation by an eye doctor. Stay with us. We'll be back with more news after this. Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're armed with the most advanced weather technology. And focus on the Suncoast. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. At Sunset Subaru in Sarasota, you'll always get the most for your money. More years, more miles, more 2016 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus winners than any other brand. And right now, you can lease the most award-winning small SUV on the planet, a new 2017 Subaru Forester for just $209 a month. Or get 0% financing, complimentary maintenance included at Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Selling your home? Insist on a 3D showcase tour from Gulf Shores Realty. Virtual tours are flat and boring and look more like a slideshow than a tour. A 3D tour from Gulf Shores Realty is like actually walking through the home without the drive. Get instant access to your next home from any device. Multiple views give home buyers a perspective like no other. 
For a limited time, mention ABC7 and Gulf Shores Realty will provide a complimentary 3D tour with your new listing. Enjoy fine wine, craft beer, and delicious foods, all while supporting a great cause at the 15th Annual Suncoast Food and Wine Festival, Saturday, November 12th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Sarasota Polo Club. Taste hundreds of wines from around the world and sample cuisine from the area's finest restaurants. Watch live cooking demonstrations from local chefs and take part in a silent auction to bid on creative prize packages that will delight any foodie or wine connoisseur. The event will feature live music by Kettle of Fish. There's free parking and all proceeds benefit a variety of local charities and Rotary Club projects. Don't miss this year's Suncoast Food and Wine Festival. Saturday, November 12th from 1 to 4 p.m. at the Sarasota Polo Club. For tickets and information, visit suncoastfoodandwinefest.com. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. A wonderful surprise for a North Carolina mom and her five children. Kim Butch's house was destroyed during Hurricane Matthew and washed the house away. And thanks to hundreds of volunteers, Butch and her kids have a newly rebuilt place to call home. They all came together for the surprise unveiling, which of course was nothing short of amazing and nothing in amazing in, in such a short time as well. Amazingly wow. short time in a nice house. See. Well, some of these TV village. shows they have where they uh, build a person, they send them off to Disney World and they come back and they have a new house. It seems like you can build a house in two days. <laughs> so well, I'm going to go to Disney World, John, so when I come back, yes. I'll have a house I'll built. I'll be working on that for you, Donnie. All right. It's 5.57. We'll be back with more news coming up. <laughs>